it's done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is one of the best days I've seen because today we have Vishti Larson with us. Mashka. I will not introduce much. He will introduce himself. And today he is going to talk on Venus and how to use Venus, how to read the chart using Venus about marriage and all these things. So I still can't imagine that I am yeah, able to get a recording with him. So this was one of my desires from long time and finally God has fulfilled it today. So welcome to Exotic Astrology and please enlighten us, introduce yourself. Although many people know, but still for the ones who don't. Namaskar. Thank you for having me, Babajit. It's a pleasure to speak here today. And uh, I, you, you, I didn't know it was a long desire of yours. You should have told me. <laughs> I would have gladly accommodated you earlier. Um, so uh, my name is Visti Larson, as you may know. Uh, I'm a student of Pandit Sanjirat. And uh, I have been studying astrology uh, for the, let me see, this is now 20 years. I've been studying <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's how long I've been studying it. And uh, I have been practicing astrology as a, as a consultant for the last 14 years now. 14 years. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. This will be my 14th year. 13 years is more correct. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, let me see. No, no. It is right. 14. I just realized. <laughs> and um, I started practicing because I went to the a copper plate reader, Achutananda's copper plate reader in Orissa. There is, from our tradition, which is now four to five hundred years old, a tradition which started officially recently from the our Param Guru, uh, 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 Param Guru Sri Achutananda Das. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, this started in Orissa, but my Guru Pandit Sanjirat, his tradition is much older. It is much oh. much. And they were already astrologers when Achutananda started to restart the, the traditions of Orissa. Uh -huh. um, so so they are, my Guruji's tradition merged with this tradition, in essence. Okay. They are the Rata, Ratas, they are Ratatreyas. They come from originally um, Gujarat. They were, they, okay. were, they were belonging to the Somnath temple there. Uh -huh. They traveled uh, gradually over the, the decades centuries to the east uh, of India. They, they were in Bihar for some time, uh -huh. where, they, where they were also uh, participating in important Shiva pujas and around a Shiva temple there. And then they came to uh, Orissa. And uh, mm -hmm. there, they uh, did the same work they've been doing since the beginning. They have been astrologers, Jyotishas, since the beginning. So four Fantastic. to five hundred years ago, they merged with the tradition of Achutananda. They still maintain their own gotra. They still maintain their own traditions, but they added their, you see, they, they complemented that, that continuance that Achutananda gave. So I went to the, I have been studying with my Guruji for a number of, uh, for a few years, I'm sorry, before that, about three to four years. Um, when I decided that I was going to be sure if I should be an Ajyotisha or not. And I decided, well, let me put all the doubts aside. I can read my chart, but I'm, I'm still not objective. So I went to the copper plate reader, which is in Kakatpur in Orissa. There, there are these copper plates, which are supposed to embody the spirits, if you will, okay. the, or the, the souls of the 12 Sisha of Achutananda. Oh. The 12 Sisha. And okay. these Sisha... If you ask through the copper plates, they will give you answers. And there's a reader who can read them, those answers. So you should look oh. it up. Kakatpur in Orissa. Go visit. Okay. You can okay. go there and get Jyotish readings. I once asked, what was my accurate birth time? And I got it. Oh. Right. So if you want to be sure about your jar ratification, <laughs> as astrologers, that's been something very interesting for us. Oh, yeah, so I went and did that, and I was clearly told, Visti, you are going to do astrology, you will write books, you will write horoscopes, this is going to be your work. Go, do it. Oh. Oh, fantastic. So, among other things, I was also told about my marriage, and when I would publish a book, and stuff like that. So, oh, fantastic. That's everything. Yes. Um, so that's what I did. And, uh, so, and here I am, uh, this long tradition that I've been honored to be a part of, <laughs> Our tradition uh, has a mix 
of, uh, of uh, various textbooks of astrology as far as we would deem them as different parts of astrology today. Uh, for example, uh, we are mostly known because of our knowledge of the Janini Sutra. But um, that's far from the only knowledge that we have. In fact, our, we don't consider the Janini Sutra different from the Parashras or Shastra. We don't consider uh -huh. it different. Okay. Because there is no difference. It is, it is one, one, it is yes. Jyotish is one. All right? Yes. They, uh, we, when, when somebody tells us that there is something called Arabic astrology or, or Western astrology, uh, it is hard to understand why why should it be different uh, we, we just wow. because just because some people speak a different language does not mean that life events are changing right yes there is only in our tradition we really only believe in one astrology right one oh, yes. Yes. so when somebody says oh this is what another astrology practice is we wonder why are they different why should they be different there can only be one you cannot differentiate like that Perfect. So complement each other. Everything should complement each other. And and yes, there's talk about different zodiacs and different approaches. But you have to understand why the approach is different and why they're different zodiacs. For example, when people say Western astrology, tropical particularly Western. Yes. Tropical, we in the tradition says yes, that's useful for weather. Oh, okay. We use it for to predicting weather. Okay. I could give a webinar now just on weather astrology. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So some people say no, no, no. We also use it for timing events. Then we think, okay. but uh, okay, you can. You, the planets are not changing their positions from each other. They're just changing their positions in the signs. So their distances from each other are the same. The planets, you see, just the degree in the sign is different now. So okay. they must be focusing a lot on planetary relationships to make those predictions. Then, okay, that's called squares. Trines, sextiles, etc. Uh, relations between plants. Yes, we call that ah. sambanda. That's right. Ah, yes, we call that sambanda. It's correct. And uh, they would, they but they call them aspects. We say, oh, but you, do you mean drishti? Drishti is a different topic. It's a different th principle. Even the use of drishti is different in Jyotish than in Western astrology. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The aspect in Western astrology and the aspect in Vedic astrology is not the same. They call okay. them both aspect, but they don't work the same way. The way oh. that Western astrologers approach aspect, we don't approach aspect in that way. For us, aspect means drishti, which means looking at something. They don't use look, they don't use sight. All right? Okay. They're not looking at a desire. So drishti is related to desire. Oh, okay? Okay. But they're not looking at desires, they're looking at relationships between planets, for example. Okay. Um, which, which is very acceptable. Yes, we use that same. It's called sambandha, right? Oh. Um, and, they, and then, oh, why, why would those tropical signs impact people's lives so much? Do you know the basis of what the tropical zodiac is? Mm. What is tropical zodiac? It's, when we say it's the seasons. Yes. Yes, it's the seasons. Um, have you seen, uh, you, you've, when you calculate a chart, you know the nodes are retrograde, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. These nodes are nodes of the moon. Yes. Okay. Imagine if you had a node of the of the sun or earth, earth okay. sun node, right? What would that be? That's, that's actually the tropical zodiac. Okay. When you do the calculation, you will see, oh, this is what we're doing. We're making a node based on the sun earth uh, 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 difference. Okay. That movement, that, that node which is moving, is much slower. It's called the tropical zodiac. The iron oh. number is like a node. Okay. We use this to see when the different animals want to mate. Okay. Have you heard that dogs want to mate in the rainy season, right? Yes. 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 Human beings want to do it in spring. Oh. If you know this, then you can get into the Freudian psychology of human beings. Okay. So the entire basis of using Western astrology to examine people and their lives is very much based on something which is more uh, what we call um, instinctive. Mm -hmm. Very instinctive. So, so that's why we can use the Western astrology. Oh, okay. If you understand it, then you stop differentiating, right? 
everybody everything has its own purpose and utility exactly. that's what Yes, we were very surprised recently to read some old Arabic texts which actually beheld some secrets of Vedic astrology which have been forgotten. Okay. So, so for some small things that we use in Jaimini, for example, that are only held in our tradition, but we found, oh, oh it's actually written down in some Arabic textbooks. So, okay. but, this, but this is the thing, when there's a large sharing of information, sometimes the information gets kept at other places and lost oh. in other places. Because the Vedic okay. Islam tradition is very secretive, so sometimes knowledge is lost all the time. Oh, okay. Like somebody didn't want to pass it on to their students and they didn't write it down, then it does nothing, oh. nothing continues, for example. Okay, okay. So, but yes, so, so that's part of the tradition of astrology that, that I've been very, very lucky to be part of. And by mm -hmm. my Guru's grace, uh, we have, uh, I have learned Parashara and Jamini. And uh, we, we learn both. Um, the tradition is supposed to behold three important books and some auxiliary books. And that's our, those are Gita, Bhagavad Gita, that is, Parashara and Jamini. These are the three important books of our tradition that we learn and have to study. All right? Okay. Yes. Okay. And yes, when we say Bhagavad Gita, we are learning Jyotish from the Bhagavad Gita. So, yes. Okay, okay. And yes, one thing I would like to say, uh, you have, uh, you also do consultations and your website is shrigaruda.com, I guess. S R I G R G A R U D A dot com. Yes, yes. So I will pin the link in the description. So okay. you have different consultations time wise. So whoever is interested, yeah. which I'm very sure many of you will be after watching this video, especially if you have any questions pertaining to Venus and marriage and all this. So then you can always go to the website and book a reading. <laughs> so thank you for that, Babajit. Yes. Um, I cannot promise that my that I am quick to answer client requests, <laughs> but I promise you will be scheduled. I'm quite busy, so but nevertheless, I look forward to any requests which would come. Yes. Um, with that said, Babaji, would you like us to start the talk about Venus? Yes. Yes. Why not? <laughs> Deal. So let me see here. I present made a presentation for today. Here it is. And I have made it and edited it and changed it and deleted something and added something a few times. So, you know, you bear with me as a, as a, as something till whenever this goes on, <laughs> sure. but bear with me because there were some things that I added and then I removed later on and whatnot. Oh, so, okay, okay. No but yes, so this is all about Venus mm -hmm. and um, um, Venus agreeably in almost every astrology tradition is responsible for relationships. Yes. I have not at this stage met one tradition which disagrees with Venus being responsible for this part of one's life. Okay. There are some who add we should not only look at Venus. That's right. I fully agree with that. In fact, according to our tradition, and when you read Parashara very closely, you realize that you need Venus, Mars, Jupiter, some people even say Mercury, to be examined in relationships. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but we sh uh, should adhere to at least that uh, the, the, the concept in constant relationships originates from Venus. So I'm going to gradually take us through examining these parts of Venus and try to help, help do so using Parashara because wow. I'm, not, I'm not going to claim anything which Parashara is not going to have already, have already spoken about to some extent. Uh -huh. And so let's go through that. And, uh, Fantastic. I think is the first, this is the first slide I had made. So what I did, I said, look, if I have to t speak on this, I should might as well go straight to the chapter that Parashara speaks about relationships in, or seventh house rather. And in that seventh house chapter, he speaks only about relationships. That's, uh -huh. it. That's he spends his entire time speaking about that. And then he adds something peculiar, but I'll mention that as well. And there he states, after pointing out he's going to speak about relationships, he says, that um, in, in this, you've seen, I've given the Sanskrit shloka here. He says, Fantastic. Kalatrapo vinasvarksham vyaya shasta ashta mastita roginim kurute narim tata chungari kambina. You can hear there's a rhythm. We are supposed to actually yes. sing. Okay. Uh, the entire parashara for a shasta can be sung. Okay? Yes. For memory's sake. Now, it, the first thing that parashara decides to say when he has to actually 
has to actually talk about relationships is the seventh Lord placed in 12th, 6th, or 8th house, devoid of own mm-hmm. sign or exaltation, will cause the spouse to be ill. Okay. Now, that sounds pretty logical, right? But yes. what we have to be very attentive of here is he speaks about the seventh Lord badly placed as giving ill health to spouse. Not okay. the seventh house. Okay. Okay. Very particular. The second, uh-huh. next, the next shloka he, he then speaks of. Then, Saptame tu stite shukre ativa kami bhaven nara. Yatra kutra stite papa yutte sti stri, sorry, maranam bhavet. Venus in the uh-huh. seventh house. Now, look, now he's saying something completely different. Venus in the seventh uh-huh. causes the person to be very passionate. Ativa kami. Okay. Now, Ativa. Uh-huh. Ati is very high. Ati, you know. Now, Ativa could also in this context mean something else. But he's, the, his main point is the person is kami, very passionate. Kami uh-huh. doesn't have to be lustful. It can be passionate alone. Okay. All right. So he says Venus in the seventh house does that. Now look at how he twists this after that. Then he says, wherever it, that is Venus, is mm-hmm. placed, when join malefics, it causes the demise of spouse. Now, don't oh. take that too seriously. Don't take that too seriously. You know, he says, stri mananam. That, that can mean a lot of other things as well. All right? oh. But what did he just do? He has actually given us three different points of reference and he has given us three different predictions. Mm-hmm. My, our main point when we read this is to understand how, wh- why are these day three different? Otherwise, somebody could do a hodgepodge and put everything together in one go here, right? Oh, 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 oh. So they are very different, these shlokas, and they happen right after each other successively. So in the next slide, I have tried to differentiate that, understanding Karashi. In these two shlokas that I, that I picked up, which are the, some of the first ones, in the in the seventh house chapter, he manages to say in just four lines, two shlokas: the seventh okay. house decides health of spouse. The seventh house decides our behavior, our attitude towards relationships. Notice that planet uh-huh. in the seventh house, you're very passionate. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Venus itself decides our fortune in relationships. And this dispels the darkness of that illusion which is there now oh seventh house is afflicted what happens venus is afflicted what happens now the problem they're completely different all three completely different in fact i'll show you one shloka which makes you even wonder what's going on in this in in parashara but these three are completely different i can show you the shlokas again and you will see really this makes a lot more sense now he says three different things they are different the only thing which was a trick, a tricky one was, he said, seventh house Venus, Venus in seventh house. You are very passionate, okay. right? Okay. If a person has that. But Venus oh. anywhere, afflicted, causes loss in relationships. Oh, okay. Yes. So there's a, there's a big difference there. When he talks about the seventh house and Venus in it, he's talking about your attitude being very passionate because Venus is very passionate. So Venus in seventh okay. house, you are very passionate. So what if Saturn uh-huh. is in seventh house? Okay. Then passionate. that is our attitude. Yes. Not very passionate. In fact, here's a prediction. If a person has Saturn in the seventh house, they have a very clear motive in life. Either they will marry a very spiritual person or they will not marry at all. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. That's a criteria because seventh house Saturn means the person is having a view that if the, if the marriage is not leading to dharma, to okay. moksha, to, to going towards God, actually the entire focus is Brahma Acharya. They want to go towards Brahma. Okay. okay. Saturn is supposed to be the, uh, according to Parashara, Brahma Graha. He uses the term okay. Kap to indicate the creator. Saturn is the creator. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is in the third house chapter. No, not third house chapter. Okay. The third because chapter. generally, Brahmacharya is associated more with Mars. So that's I'll explain the difference later. Okay. But but there is a but Saturn is focused on creating. All right. When you say Brahma Acharya, one thing about when you, some people use the term Brahmacharya means okay celibacy, right? Huh. But Brahma Acharya means literally to follow Brahma. 
Oh, okay. Achar okay. is to follow. Correct. Yes. So taking shelter in, if you will. So Brahma Acharya is is actually Saturn's domain. He's looking to follow Brahma. All right. Okay. Okay. Whereas Mars is restricting. He's restricting relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh. A big difference. Saturn will gladly have relationships as long as it leads to following Brahma. Mars says, oh. I will have relationships, but I don't want to have much of that physical part. Oh. Peculiar, right? So mm -hmm. each planet in the seventh house is going to give a different attitude towards relationships. Mm -hmm. If Sun Fantastic. is in the seventh house, or if there's nothing in seven, what do you do? See the seventh Lord, right? Okay. You define your attitude. Or Drishti's on the seventh house will temporarily define your attitude. These are all attitude. This you. It's not the spouse. Uh -huh, okay. Big confusion. Big confusion is dispelled. Yeah. Fourth house is you in matters of property. Ten thousand is you in matters of work. But the lords of these houses can be that person that you're meeting over there at work, oh. at home, in relationships. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Very simple, right? Yes. Now, the seventh lord decides the health of spouse according to uh, Parasha. That's what, he, mm -hmm. that's what he did. He used the seventh lord and said, yes. how is it placed? Let's see what happens to health of spouse. And one it's, thing I wanted to ask you in this, uh, the, if you would go to the previous slide, where... Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so in this, uh, it's written seventh lord placed in 12, 6, and So this is from the Lagna, right? This is not yes. from the seventh house. It is from the Lagna. In fact, he okay. would be very specific if he, had, if he had said it was from seventh house. He would have said, yes. he would have said from the seventh. Okay. Yeah, because the term houses are anyways the same. I mean, the six and twelve houses will anyways be dustanas from both of these. Not all of them, right? The six yes. and the, the, the second, second house, house will be the exception. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes, yes. No, he is referring to these from the Lakna. Okay, perfect. But you have asked a very interesting question. What if it's from the seventh house? Yeah, because they say eighth house is uh, second house is the eighth from the seventh. So this uh, that is also not good. So I was asking this is, those this, if a, if a, okay. See, I'm giving a few secrets away by me answering that. All right. Okay. So, so I'll give this one. All right. It's not written down anywhere. I mean, I'm sorry. Parashara hints at it in the Daridra Yoga Adhyaya. He says oh. that if a house lord is badly placed from the house, that okay. house is unavailable. Okay. Okay. okay, unavailable. For example, let's say your fourth lord is in the 11th house. Okay. Okay, that means property is unavailable. You have difficulty oh. finding property. Okay? okay, so you have to do a mantra or you have to work very hard to find the property. So if people have the lord of a house badly placed from the house. Okay. For example, if the seventh lord is in second house. Yes. Then, you, uh, then it's difficult to find the spouse. Ah, okay. That is how you see it. See the slight difference, right? Very slight difference. This will mean the health is spoiled. Not, no. It means it's unavailable. No, no. I'm saying this loka means yes. the health is spoiled. Yes, yes. If something is in Dushtana from the Lagna. Okay, perfect. Then that means that house is being lost. Oh, okay. Okay. All okay. right. If it's in Dushtana from the house, uh -huh. It means the house is unavailable. You have to work hard to find that, find it. Okay, okay but you will still find it. <laughs> you can. I mean, sometimes it's permanently unavailable. They, but, okay, okay. But for most people, that's not the case. All right. Yes. With that okay. differentiation we have to do from a different place because, oh. because what I wanted to do when, I, when we come to this part here, uh, when I try to differentiate the results that Parashara is referring to, yes. is that we in these three parts are the three parts of analysis of every any house okay. okay and they refer to different levels of analysis for example okay the seventh lord is defining we said health of spouse it generally i'm just going to say fortune of the spouse okay 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 now that means you have found the spouse so that means you went looking first right Okay, okay. That means the, the seventh house has gone looking because that's you. You are looking, right? Seventh house is you okay, looking okay, for the relationship. Okay, okay. Correct, seventh correct. Lord is whom you find. Uh -huh. But Venus is the Karaka. Venus is like the God who's deciding whether to give you or not. Okay. Okay. 
This is a big principle, all right? The karaka is like God deciding, should I give you, should I not give you? You're the recipient, okay? okay. You are the recipient. You're not the one who gets. You are the recipient. Uh -huh. You didn't find the spouse. God gave you a spouse. Okay, okay. All right? Okay. Yes. So when we touch this, it means that the most pivotal planet or pivotal aspect of analyzing charts is first to see, will the Karaka give you? Ah, okay. Because if you don't get anything from God, what can you do with it? You don't have any toys to play with, right? Okay. Yes. So Venus is giving, seventh house is the one receiving, and the okay. seventh Lord is the one enjoying. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And right. generally when it's written here, Venus decides our fortune in relationships. Yes. So I made that very simply, right? That, yes. that I wrote very simply because there's a large spectrum of analysis there. All right? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so now, to I think just before I go into Venus, I had another interesting slide here I wanted to show you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, you know, if you thought you had enough of Parashara and you said, okay, now you figured out Parashara. <laughs> then he throws this shloka at you and uh, the Muni gives us this really interesting point. He says, Jaya dibhe swabhe swoche stri sukam punam ma dishet. This is actually the first shloka in that seventh house chapter. And I didn't mention it from the beginning because he does something a bit peculiar here, which struck me. Watch okay. this. If the Lord of the Jaya Baba, now, normally Jaya Baba is interpreted as seventh Lord or seventh house rather. Okay. So Jaya Baba is supposed to be seventh house. If the Lord of this is in own sign or exaltation sign, the person is completely happy with the word is used as women, stri, okay? But uh -huh. it actually can mean marital happiness, okay? Uh -huh. Because before we say that before stri, one is three. Three. Okay. It's like a tree, you know, there's nothing. Stri is that additional happiness which is there. Okay? Okay. So um so so I, I made us like a loose translation, but the word stri refers to uh, that which happens through married life. Stri sukha. Uh -huh. Now my question when I saw this shloka. Right after this, he says, if the seventh Lord is in Dushtana or Nietzsche, the, per the spouse is unhealthy. Okay. And here he doesn't even talk about health. What okay. is this about? Does yes. that mean if your spouse is unhealthy, you cannot be happy in relationships? Okay. That's not correct. Uh -huh. Right? That's not correct. Yes. Is it? So, so what is he talking about here? This, is this something else? This is confusing, actually. First, yeah. he says there's happiness in relationships. Then he talks about disease from the same Lord. And then he's not differentiating between whether one can be diseased and still have happiness, or be happiness and diseased, or, or, or what's going on. Can, can both not happen? Uh -huh. What is Stri Sukam? Stri Sukam can also mean a great deal of, uh, of comfort in relationships. Yes. Do you need to depend on the spouse's health for that? No. Okay. Let some somebody says, "Will I be happily married?" Yes. That is trisuka, right? Yes. Yes. Correct. Then you can say, "Yes, you'll be happily married," and then yes. you'll also be able to say, "Oh, your spouse will have some health problems." Can both uh, happen, right? Yes, it both can. can happen. I yes. have a client who has this actually. Okay. They have trisuka, and their spouse is suffering from an ailment. All right. Oh, okay. Yes. And rightly so, their, their seventh Lord is in Dushtana. Yes. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. then how do I find the Sri Sukha? They are happy. See the problem. So they, they, when I saw this sloka, I said, I have to point this out. I have to just show this. And so I decided, okay, maybe this is something my Guruji taught me. Let me just read the rest of the chapter. And then I noticed one thing. Whenever Parashara uses the word Jaya to represent the seven years. See, here it says Jaya, right? Huh. Now, what, if you go back. Here it says Kalatra. Okay. 
So this was the part about servant lord. Kalatrapo, Po is referring to the Lord. Kalatra, okay. he's now referring to something else. Right? Okay, okay. Now here he says Jaya. So why would he use two different words? Couldn't he okay. have used the same word? He could use the word Kalatrapa again. Uh -huh, okay. Could have done it. It would have fitted perfectly. Yes. Uh -huh. He could have made the shloka very nice. Then I examined. Although Jaya Bhava commonly has been translated as seventh house, whenever he uses the word Jaya Bhava, he starts talking about how happy you will be or okay. unhappy, how much wealth you will have, oh. how much fame you will have. He's not talking about the regular seventh house anymore. Oh, it's much broader spectrum. It's something else. Oh, okay. This is some other seventh house. All right. Okay. We don't know which one. Okay. Right? We don't know which one at this stage. Okay. So, but it's not the regular seventh house from Lagna. It's some okay. other seventh house from somewhere else. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not going to touch this in this presentation. Honestly, I had prepared a few slides and I said, no, 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 no. Confusing. Too late, okay. too early. But I want to invite the, the discussion as to what is he talking about here? Because it's not the regular seventh house. Obviously, you can see it obviously from his shloka that they, there's a risk that he is actually talking about something other than the regular seventh house. And oh. you can see that from the words he used, suddenly this has become Jaya Baba, Jaya Deepa, something different. Okay, It's not Jaya Kalatra something anymore. Victory or something like that. Some, well, that's why the seventh house is referred to as Jaya Baba normally. Okay. okay, because it is where, where, uh, why do you need victory? Because there was a battle, right? Uh, uh. So there was a battle. Seventh house is used also for war. But yes. my point is, this may not be seventh house from Lagna, because uh. otherwise, how could we differentiate the results? Okay. Yes. So <laughs> I, I, will, I would invite this. Try this. Try this. Um, the, um, the, 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 the real, or the first sign of the zodiac is Aries, right, Mesha? Yes, yes. Seven thousand Libra for that, correct? Yes. Put your, put, now put, uh, take two fingers, put left finger in Mesha and right finger in Mesha, okay? Okay. And then with your right finger, put that on, on Libra. Okay. So what did you have? First sign Mesha, seven thousand Libra, okay? Yes. Now put the left finger in Taurus. Okay. The right finger is still in Libra. Okay. Okay. Now, yes. From there, you what did you do first? You did seventh house from Aries, correct? Yes. Yes. Now do seventh house from Libra. Aries. Okay. Okay. So what happens? First step, Aries, Libra. Second yes. step, Taurus, Aries. Okay. Third step, Gemini, Libra. Fourth step, Cancer, Aries. Okay. Keep going back and forth between Aries and Libra. Okay. Prince, simple principle. If the Lagna is odd, treat seven thousand Libra. If Lagna is even, treat seven thousand Aries. Simple. Okay. Have you ever heard people say Mars and Venus are both important in relationships? Here's the yes, thing. yes. This is the derivation. Oh, okay. Okay. Aries Libra, Aries Libra, ping pong, Aries Libra. Okay. 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 All right. So, for example, I know a lady. Her lagna is Mina Pisces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seventh Lord is Mercury in Mercury. eighth house. Okay. Pisces is an even sign, right? Yes. So treat Aries as the seventh house. Okay. No planets there. Mars is in Scorpio, in own sign. Oh, prediction spouse will be rogi will have some issue with their health or their body. Yes. Okay. But they, she will have three sukha because the Lord of their Jaya Bhava is Mars and Onsa. Ah, <laughs> peculiar, right? Try it. Try it. See what happens. They give me your feedback. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. See, Parashara has given four, four principles and two shlokas now. Okay? This was oh. the first half of the first shloka. In, in two shlokas, four different principles. 
Mm, wow. Fantastic. That's for Ashura for you. He doesn't waste time. <laughs> okay, okay. Mind blowing this is. Now, uh, let me see. This is an example chart. Now, I was not supposed to 